All right, so you suck at color grading, big deal. Except it is a big deal because color grading is very important if you're gonna have to color grade. If you shot this in log like I am, you can't not color grade, but if you color grade and you end up with something that looks like this, this is bad. And why is this bad? It's because my skin tone doesn't look natural. It doesn't look good out of the camera. And it doesn't look good in my color grade because I didn't color grade this shot correctly. So how do you take this shot that originally started here to this, where my skin tones and the contrast looks good and the colors look nice and there's a style to it. We're not gonna talk about color grading per se, but we will talk about color correction and then skin tone corrections. I'm not a professional, I ain't claiming to be, but I do wanna mention that I've messed this up enough that I think at this point I have it down, at least for YouTube standards. And that's that's all we're going for anyways. Let's, let's go inside and start. What is, what we need to do first is add contrast and then add some color saturation and correct the white balance. So first and foremost, go to your contrast in your Lumetri color. And just in case you don't have the Lumetri color set up, make sure you go to window, turn on Lumetri color and Lumetri scopes. Now you don't see my scopes on the screen here, but that's because they're right here. Click Lumetri scopes and make sure that if you right click, you have waveform Luma and vector scope YUV activated, turned on, ready to go. Now you can go ahead add some contrast. So let's take our contrast and boost it way up, maybe about 80 or 90. I think that's a good amount of contrast compared to the original. We can press this button right here to bypass on and off to see our effect. Take our highlights. I think I should add some highlights to this, boost them a little bit. Shadows, maybe boost the shadows a little bit too. Keep watching, you know, see what you've done. See if you think it's okay. I think it is so far, but because we put our shadows up and because we put our highlights up, now we need to take our white point, bring it down a little bit, take our blacks and bring it down a little bit too to really like not lose the detail in the blacks. Cause we don't want to crush them, but we definitely want to not raise the shadows and the blacks so much that there's noise in that region. So we can keep watching this vector scope right here. This is once again, the waveform, not the vector scope. So we can keep watching our waveform, make sure we're not clipping under zero on our blacks. See if I bring this way down, that's clipping right there. And then our white balance, that's the big part right now that we need to focus on. First and foremost, take your white balance toggle tool thing and then find something white in the scene if you have it in my case the rips in the jeans right here are a pretty good example of what white thread you know is pure white if you would let's go ahead and click on that and automatically you can see the difference that just made if i undo versus redo it quite a difference but the skin tone just a little bit too far in the magenta a little bit in the greens so what we want to go ahead and do now is we can do two things one first and foremost go to effect controls go to opacity click on the mask tool and her arm right here is a good example. It's a good section of skin tone that is easy to identify. So first and foremost, now that we have this selected, this is the only thing that the camera is recognizing in the Wumetri scopes. You'll notice how small of a region and how small of a region here. This, we need to make sure we get to around 70, 65 IRE. This is called an IRE scale. It goes from zero to 100. You can think of it as percentage if you don't want to think about it as IRE. It doesn't really matter. Not for this video at least but we wanna get this range to around 70 if we can. So first and foremost, let's boost our whites a little bit, boost our shadows a tiny bit, maybe push our highlights up too. All right, I'd say that's probably good. We can go back to effect controls, turn the opacity off, and see that the shot still looks pretty good. And now we have our skin tone. If we turn this back on and go back to Wimetri Scopes, closer to that 70, 65 IRE mark that we needed to be at. That's the standard. A standard doesn't mean you have to meet it. It just means it's a reference point for most things that work in you know most situations. Darker skin tones, I know I'm not covering it in this video, roughly around the 45 to 55 IRE. Um, that can be debated, but you know, you kind of play with what works and what you feel is right, and you go from there. That being said, let's go down here now to HSL secondary. We can see that this is pretty close to this line. This line, you might be like, what is that? What does it mean? And what that means is that that line is a rough area of where skin tones are correctly colored. Um, I don't know the right way to word that, but I think you get the point. So what can we do with that? Well, for one, we don't need to do HSL secondary for this clip because it is so close. However, if we go to color wheels and match and we take our midtones, and remember, midtones affect the middle range of dark and light in the image. That being said, we know that it's leaning towards the red and magenta side just a tiny bit. So what can we do? We can take this away from our color wheel. And if you haven't noticed, the color wheel matches the vector scope, not coincidence. Let's go ahead and take our midtones and drag them closer to the green region and the yellow region a little bit, just a tiny bit. And now we're pretty much online with that line. 
go back to effect controls, I'll turn the opacity layer off, and now you can see the skin tones are, are pretty much accurate to what you would expect real life to be. So let's go ahead and delete that. And then from there, we can turn the color wheels and match on and off. So that's before, this is after, before, after. The skin tones obviously have a tiny bit too much green in them. So if this is the case, like it is, let's back it off a little bit. And then our HSL secondary, we can go ahead and choose and pick the color of the skin. Press this button right here, it toggles it on so you can see only like a masked version of that color range. You can see it's pretty much just targeting her face and her skin. Let's widen it a little bit to target more of that color range. There we go. Turn that off. And now we can individually affect that color over here in the global color wheel. Let's bring this down. Turn this on and off. That's before. That's after. It's so subtle, but it's not going to affect the rest of the image like it would just the color of her skin in general. So this is before. This is after. Obviously, much, much better. It's not graded. It's just color corrected and skin tone corrected. That's all we're going for. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it helped you as at least a little bit. I know that I might not be perfect at this. And once again, I'm not a professional, but I hope that you learned at least a little something more than you knew before you watched the video. With that being said though, uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time. Let me know what else you want to see. Thank you for watching.